Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues. A really good day to head to Colorado Springs. Joining us in the Nike hot seat, the head coach of the Falcons, Sam Barber. Sam, how are you? Doing great, Scott. Thanks for having me on. Super pumped up to see the press release that went out on the 6th of September, as some people say, 6 Sep. <laughs> but uh, the Big 12 Wrestling Conference duel between you and Fresno State will take place on the deck of the USS Midway. Talk to us about this very special event. We're seeing events a uh, couple of years uh, held in very unique places, and this is a good one. Yeah, we, you know, we're unbelievably excited about it. It's going to be a premier event. You know, it ties in you know, our, our military uh, affiliation with California wrestling. So it's a big deal. Fresno is back, uh, you know, which anytime we get a division one program back, that's huge for the sport of wrestling, especially anything on, uh, on the West coast is, you know, we don't have as many programs out here. Um, so I think that's a big deal that we're going to kind of be celebrating the return of Fresno state. They're also happen to be in the big 12 conference, um, 12 teams, unbelievably competitive conference. And again, having us, you know, there's a great, um, there's a lot of, uh, we have a lot of military members in, in, in San Diego area. We have, you know, you have a Marine base there, 29 Palms. You have the Naval Amphibious Base on Coronado Island, and we and we got an Air Force base there as well. So uh, we're excited about it. This is not the first wrestling event to be held on a uh, uh, on a USS um, vessel, but uh, it is the first college wrestling event that I could find anyway. What is what's your research been telling you as far as uh, wrestling on on a ship? You know, not you haven't we haven't uh, not so they have their kids tournament out there, which I think is a big deal, and that kind of that spurred the idea. But when they had an opportunity to, um, you know, Aaron Root is the kind of local, local organizing committee and Left Coast Wrestling when they had an opportunity to do something with a college wrestling program, and you know they're they're just they're they're visionaries. They want to grow the sport of wrestling, and so I haven't heard of anything else. It's just been you know it's just been this this opportunity here. We actually are part and parcel on the support mechanism for the USS Iowa docked up in, uh, I think it's Long Beach. And uh, um, we had often thought about doing it, but I don't think they have the room that the Midway has on it. That is quite the deck, isn't it? It is, you know, and it, it, even as big as it is, there's a lot of stuff going on there. It's an active museum, you know, so there's, there's airframes on the deck and we're going to be right underneath the tower and with that, it's still we're still going to be limited to about 1,900 fans, you know, wow. at the event, which I think is going to be great because uh, it's going to provide an intimate environment. Um, I think it's going to be just an unbelievable experience for our cadet athletes and, and for fans alike. And again, uh, Aaron Root and Left Coast Wrestling, uh, they've done a, they're going to put on a great event. There's there's going to be a pre and post match social live music. Um, it's going to be amazing. You know, we're working on you know getting a few you know maybe t38s or f16s to fly over so some of that stuff um the former there's a former gopher wrestler uh university of minnesota wrestler that's on seal team three uh in, in coronado beach and we're going to be doing some work workouts there um and they're in their facility too so it's going to be an amazing opportunity for our cadet athletes and i think fans alike coach i gotta tell you i'm not a fan of coronado beach except for that one night i played beach volleyball back when I was in the motion picture business with a bunch of Playboy playmates. I'll tell you what, we had a great time. <laughs> it's a, a dream come yeah. true, but man, I was in no shape. <laughs> yeah, Amazing. a little bit different experience than we're going to be having probably. <laughs> All yeah. right. This is a, a, a truly great opportunity for your cadet athletes to do something special in a military environment. Can you talk about that? Yeah, again, like we, it's, that's who we are. That's what we do. You know, these guys spend four to five years here at our institution, um, getting a world-class education, um, getting indoctored into the military culture, assimilated with a six, six week basic training and, and then they grow, we grow them as leaders, uh, over the four year, 48 month program here. And then they go out into our armed forces and they do, do amazing things and they lead. So the effect, you know, whenever we have an opportunity to, uh, you know, do something, especially highlight, you know, what they can do athletically within, within a culture, you know, military culture, military environment, it's a special opportunity for us. You know, when, wherever I'm a road, we, we try and make an attempt to get out and kind of interact with people in our big air force or, you know, different branches of the armed forces so that, so that the guys can get a little bit better understanding, like kind of like why they're doing this, you know, why are they, why are they staying up uh, and taking 18 to 21 credit hours of extre strenuous academics? You know, why are they, why are they running and leading programs here? Um, you know, why are they developing as a leader of character 
in a warrior for combat in our Air Force. You know, and I think is sometimes you lose sight of that um, when you're here at the academy. You lose sight of that sometimes when you're uh, at a state school arena. So when we can do something in a military environment uh, with, you know, a strong military presence in a community, uh, it, it's great for those guys to be able to just kind of connect all the dots. Folks, you can uh, buy tickets to the event on the Eventbrite website. Look for the event and the date. It'll take place Tuesday, November 21st. It'll be held uh, on the deck of the most, one of the most, uh, well, the longest serving aircraft carrier of the 20th century. It served actively from 1945 to 1992. As you heard Coach, Coach Barber mention, it is an active museum. Lots to see and lots to do. Approximately 200,000 sailors served aboard the carrier and known for several naval aviation breakthroughs as well as several humanitarian missions that could not have been accomplished without the USS Midway. Our guest today in the Nike hot seat, Sam Barber, the head coach of the Falcons. Sam, we know that uh, you have been designated a regional training center. What kind of work went into getting that done? Well, we've always, we've had the designation, but we really haven't executed on that. Ah. So, you know, rec- recently we've just kind of started using it and it's been outstanding again we're starting to uh and again we've always had an outstanding relationship with usa wrestling because they're based here in colorado springs with the olympic training center but we're really starting to leverage that um and, and do a lot of things together i mean a lot of things so we've had you know matt linlin gary mayab uh kevin jackson and tomorrow bill zadick or today bill zadick coming up to run practices in our rtc so that there's that part we we we, uh, we made an attempt to uh recognize uh, the world championship team the guys coming back from paris a freestyle team at our home football game and 30 seconds before we were going to go out on the field and be recognized or rich bender bill zadick joe russell and kevin jackson and we had an outstanding highlight video 30 seconds before that opportunity came up we had a rain delay and the game got delayed for two hours if you saw any of that it was on espn a little bit but uh so we're going to try and reschedule that for uh for the 14th of, of October, but so just uh, the partnership uh, is is Bill and Kevin and Joe get their freestyle program up and running, and you get some residents here. You know we can provide uh, facility, uh, practice partners, um, coaching support, and as we try and grow that into also supporting our all Air Force team and our WCAP program within the Air Force too. So it's just a really unique opportunity to really grow our program. Um, uh, and expose our guys within the program here, our cadet athletes here, to high-level wrestling, high-level coaching, and continue to grow them t- into podium-prepared athletes for the Big 12s and the NCAAs. What a beautiful trip this would be for any wrestling fan and their families. About 1,900 is what they're going to uh, – is it 1,900, Sam, or 1,500? Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not exactly sure. You know, I recall 1,900, but that might be including, you know, official party – uh, athletes, coaches, those types of things, you know. So I think capacity might be 1,900, and we might be selling 1,500 feet seats somewhere in there. Team USA uh, will be uh, running some exhibition bouts as well, and I think it's important that not only you but Coach Steiner at Fresno State are recognizing what USA Wrestling is doing. A lot of success here at USA Wrestling as of late. The freestyle men's team took home the world championship in Paris. Women came in second under the other Coach Steiner. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be a lot of Coach Steiners around. But uh, the Twins are enjoying some great success. How special is it for you to be a part of the very first or inaugural season of being back on the mat for Fresno? Uh, it's a big deal. Again, you know, I think Division One wrestling, you know, we've been shrinking since 1972, down from 300 programs. You know, we're roughly at 76, 78, somewhere in there. So um, it, we've, had, you know, we've had some great success adding programs. Um at the uh, smaller smaller divisions, but you know not not so much Division One. So I, I think it's monumental anytime that we have a program added or brought back in Division One wrestling. You know, and it's stuff like that provides a little glimmer of hope that maybe we can get Boise back. Uh, you know, and, and stuff like that. But it's a big deal, and the fact that we're going to be part of an event like this is going to build excitement around um, their program and and get it get it kind of started on the right foot. Um, so that they're there, you know, so we don't ever lose them again. I think it's important, and we're excited to be part of it. You brought up Boise, and of course, that's been on the tip of all wrestling fans' tongues over the last few months since it was announced. And then uh, the football season began, and people stopped coming to football. If one has to wonder if the president of the university and the athletic department isn't doing a disservice to sports in general, and the fans are 
are responding. So uh, we hope Boise will reconsider at some point or at least release that uh, individual who made that terrible decision and we can get back on track. Sam Barber, our guest. Bart Horton's still there. Chris, is it Chris Heilman? Chris Heilman, yep. Dustin Kilgore, man, what a tough cat. Yeah, Dustin Kilgore is actually a rider. So um, so he, he he's, he's a second assistant rider. But again, that's another... For three three consecutive years, our volunteer assistant's been a, been a uh, an athlete at the Olympic Training Center that's been competing at the highest level, you know, with aspirations of being an Olympian and a world champion. So that's going to continue. Um, we'll continue to have a, uh, a volunteer affiliated with the Olympic Training Center, and we actually got a guy that we're about ready to announce here in a couple couple weeks. But we got to do a little bit more work, and you know, looking to build our staff also to include, uh, you know, an affiliation with USA Wrestling as we look towards bringing in a um, director of ops and a head RTC coach. Wow. Okay. Uh, coach, who stands up, who stands out as uh, team leaders this year? On our team, we, we got a great group. You know, we had, we've had two consecutive top 25 recruiting classes by Win Magazine. So we have a, you know, a, a young, hungry group of freshmen, but we also have a great group of upperclassmen coming back and leading. So you, know, you got the young guys that, you know, they want to do big things and they're hungry and they're doing the work and we have a great culture within our upperclassmen. But, uh, you know, Drew Romero's back. He was on the NCAA qualifier a couple of years ago. He beat the number 12 seat at the NCAAs. Um, you know, Isaac Jimenez has been a guy that's uh, been on college coaches radar. He's not so much a general wrestling fan, but he's a guy that can wrestle. He's your 33 uh, that, pounder from El Paso. Yeah. That's right. Had a few injuries, but he can he can compete and wrestle. Um, so Alex Mossing, you know, was an uh, outstanding wrestler, national champion, uh, University Nationals last year in Greco. Beat a couple uh, good guys in freestyle as well. So, you know, we think he's he's he has the ability to do some great things. Parker Simington's a freshman uh, in our program that had a great year at our, our prep school last year. And then uh, final two guys that, uh, you know, Zen Ikehara is our team captain who's had an outstanding summer, probably three guys. And then Anthony McLaughlin, six at University Nationals, made it to the semifinals, uh, you know, was in and out of the rankings a little bit last year. And then uh, Alex L- Lopachansky, you know, is, again, a guy that was in and out of the rankings last year that we think is going to make some noise this year. And we have a pretty good heavyweight, too, that had a great freshman campaign last year in Kerry Powers. So unknown names right now and uh you know we're not uh, we're not really included in any preseason rankings but you know rankings are for the fans and um you know i think here in the coming weeks we're going to push some guys uh, into those rankings and, and get the falcons on the map a little bit a lot of folks may not understand how difficult it is to get in to the air force academy but to be able to wrestle once you're in that's pretty that's a pretty big step. Parker Simington out of Loveland, Colorado, Thompson Valley, if you recall, uh, will wrestle for you at 57, or at least will be in there at 57. We'll see if he gets that spot. Got to earn it. But uh, this is a, a real neat opportunity because from Colorado, it's literally in his backyard. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and to be able to wrestle that close to home at such a highly respected institution, you know, this is... Um, yeah, can you go through the process of how you how a young person gets into the Air Force Academy? Well, well, a couple of things. You know, academics. You know, we're high academic in school. So, um, if you're interested in, you know, if you're interested in coming to the Ivy League, to the Air Force Academy, you, you you're going to have to have the same qualifications you're going to need to go to the Ivy League. So, um, you know, that's how high the academics are here. It's it's unbelievable. We're we're ranked in every national publication for a world class education. You know, U.S. News and Reports, Forbes, everything. You know, it's an unbelievable opportunity to get a great education. So that's you know, prim- that's the biggest thing. And secondly, is you got to have service on your heart. You know, we're we're warriors and leaders first and foremost in everything we do. So that's got to be important to you. Um, if you just want to make a wrestling decision and we're not going to be the place for you, but if you want to make a life decision where you can get a world-class education, um, you can become part of something bigger than yourselves and and you can make a difference in the world the day you graduate. You know, those are the types of conversations you have to have with yourself, the type of conversation we have to have in the recruiting process and and the, and the wrestling is outstanding. We're in the big 12 conference and we compete at the highest levels. We beat the best guys in the country. You know, you don't have to look too far in our past. To see, to look at guys like Colvin Owen and Josh Martinez that were, you know, Josh Cremar that were around the 12 guys, you know, Cole in his senior season, he'd beaten everybody in the country except for the two guys that wrestled in the finals, you know, major decision, Dylan Ness. So, you know, we can compete and beat the best guys in the country from the Air Force Academy. But, you know, with that, um, you know, 
there comes a lot of hard work. There sure. comes a lot of hard work of high academics, and and you have to be serious about growing up. You know, I'm you trying to remember. Here, you got to grow up. I'm trying to remember the former Falcon that uh, is now a NASA astronaut. Uh, he was born in Europe, raised in Virginia. Yeah, Cal, Cal Lindgren. Yeah, I, a yeah. wonderful interview. And yeah. I, I joked with him that uh, <laughs> I wonder, I said, what is your primary job on your last mission? What was your primary job on your last mission into space? He said, to learn how to grow lettuce in zero gravity. And I said, <laughs> you went through all of this education, becoming a doctor, going through the Air Force Academy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All these things just to learn how to grow lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What a yeah. what a joy he was and how smart and uh, how grateful we are for his wrestling heritage and he is grateful as well. We're grateful to have you in the Nike hot seat today, Sam. Appreciate you taking the time. And uh, folks, again, we want to invite you to be a part of this uh, very special event that's coming up because quite frankly, I don't know of anything more special than this particular event, the Battle on the Midway. Tickets are on sale now. You'll want to be a part of it. It's going to be limited availability. Don't miss out on a chance to be on board. One of the most famed ships of all time. And it's a flat top and a big one at that. Big 12 Wrestling Conference Duel will feature Air Force versus Fresno State. Welcome back, Coach Steiner and Fresno State Bulldogs. Our guest today, Sam Barber in the Nike Hot Seat. Sam, thank you. Appreciate you, Scott. Thanks for all you do to promote our sport. Thanks for having me on. Our pleasure. Thanks for watching.